I will be doing a short series on the cloning and removal tools in Affinity Photo. This first video I'll start with some tips and tricks for the perfect object removal. In the upcoming follow-up videos I'm going to focus more on the tools itself. So let's get started with this image. As you might have guessed I'm going to remove the lady and her footsteps. The easiest way of removing objects in Affinity is using the InPaint tools. We actually have two versions of them. The InPaint Fill and the InPaint Brush. I will show both of them to you. Let's first start with the InPaint Fill. In order to use the InPaint Fill we are going to need a selection. To create the selection I am going to use the freehand marquee tool and select the areas I would like to remove. When making selections it is easy to add new selections to the existing selection. This can be done by keeping the control key pressed. But we can also easily remove selections from the current selection by holding the Alt or Option key. So basically I can make a rough selection first and then by adding or removing selections I can fine tune it easily to get the final selection I need for the InPaint tool. It is important that you should not make a perfect selection of the subject but always include some surrounding areas in the selection. By having the surrounding pixels in the selection we'll make sure that the inpainted area smoothly transitions with the rest of the image. To move around the document while making the selections I'm using the space key to temporarily pan the document to the area of my focus and keep adding selections to the final selection. Awesome! I think we now have all the areas to be removed. Let's apply the InPaint fill. It can be found in the edit menu. But wait, it is grayed out. And the reason for that is that the InPaint tools work only on pixel layers. If we look closely in our layers panel, we can see that the current layer is in fact an image layer. This can be confusing for new users. An image layer is usually a photo that has been imported and we cannot make changes to the pixels of it. So what we need to do is to convert this to a pixel layer so that we can modify its pixels. Before doing that I am going to make a duplicate so I can use the original later for comparison. Conversion of an image layer to a pixel layer can be done by rasterizing it. I can right click on the duplicate in the layers panel and then select rasterize. Now that we have a pixel layer let's try the inpaint fill again. Let's give it a couple of seconds and have a look at that. Pretty awesome. It did a pretty good job. If we look closely we can see that the center area in the image with the water in the sand doesn't look perfect. If we scroll down to check the sand it is definitely a good result. I will fix the problem in a minute but as promised let me first share with you how we can do the same by using the InPaint brush tool instead of the InPaint fill. I will duplicate the original again and move it to the top so we can use that for the InPaint brush. Let's also rename them. Time to use the InPaint brush. As this is a brush you can make it bigger and smaller with the bracket key, just like with a regular brush. The moment I start painting we get this message from the assistant that the image is rasterized into a pixel layer. As mentioned earlier the inpainting and cloning tools work only on pixel layers. So let's thank the assistant for saving us a right click. Now here is an important tip when using the inpainting tool. Always brush the whole subject you want to remove. If you don't you get a half blended misformed subject and it is going to take you a lot of effort to clean it up later and to get a good end result. As you see I now have this dark area which definitely doesn't blend in. So let's undo these last brush strokes by pressing command Z or control Z. I think this is the most used keyboard shortcut when doing in painting or cloning. 
This time, I'm going to paint over the whole subject. One big disadvantage of the in-paint brush is that the moment I let my mouse button go, it will start the in-paint process, which makes it difficult to select multiple areas or navigate in the document. As you also have guessed, it makes it impossible to paint disconnected areas. As long as I keep my mouse button pressed, I can use the bracket keys to make the brush smaller or bigger, or use the mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out, which allows me to paint more precisely. However, it does not have a modifier key to clear a brushed area, so if you accidentally paint over an area, there is no way to fix that. You probably need to do the whole in painting again. This can be a major disadvantage compared to the in paint fill, where you build up the final selection by adding or removing selections. So, in general, the in paint fill works best for smaller areas or easy to paint areas. Depending on what you have brushed, the results can change. If you don't have a satisfying result, you can undo and try again. By the way, the same also applies to the in-paint fill. So if we look at the result of the in-paint brush and compare it with the in-paint fill, the brush version is a bit disappointing. So I'm going to press the command C to undo and try again. Ok, this version looks much better. Let's also do the footsteps in the sand. Beautiful. If we zoom in, we can see that the middle area, just like with the in-paint fill, needs some attention. So, how are we going to fix that? We could keep in-painting until we get an acceptable result and it might turn out ok. But let me share a simple hack we can apply. If we compare the in-painted image with the original, we can see that we still have some areas which we can use from the original. The more we use from the original, the less we need to reproduce. One way of doing that might be by duplicating the original, putting it on top and masking the area we can still use. But let me share another interesting method on how to achieve this. I'm going to make use of the global sources function in the clone tool. For this, I will need a pixel layer copy of the original, so I'll make a duplicate and convert it to a pixel layer. If I go to the clone tool, there is an option in the properties to select where to sample from. The list contains current layer, current layer below and layers beneath. The interesting part is that we can also add a global source, where we can define the image it needs to sample from. The Add Global Source button is disabled, and strangely, when I Alt or Option click on the current document to select the source area to sample from, the button gets enabled. It looks like a source area should always exist before you can add a global source. As the button is now enabled, we can select a pixel layer from this document or any other document and add it as a global source for the clone tool. In this case, I just want to use the original image, so I will select that original layer we created earlier and press the Add Global Source button. By the way, this is also a perfect way to clone from variations of the same photo, or if you just want to copy parts of another image into the current image. Anyway, let's continue. When I press the Add Global Source button, Affinity opened up the Sources panel and as you can see, our selected layer has been added to it. If we look closely, we can even see a dot indicating the source area, which was copied over from the last source area selection. Maybe this was the reason why a source area was needed to add a global source. Because I have a global source now, I can select the global option from the drop down selection in the clone tool properties. Awesome! Let's go back to the layers and enable our in-painted layer and do some cloning from the original now. I will clone as much as I can around the subject from the original. As you notice, it doesn't have to be pixel perfect 
and it is fine if we restore back some unwanted areas. I will switch back to the in paint brush and brush out the unwanted cloned areas, like the hand and the parts of the body we accidentally restored during the previous process. Now that we have copied over as much as we can from the original, time to move to the next step, which will be filling in the missing areas. So the biggest problem area we still have is the area on the beach missing the water. I'm going to use the clone tool and set its source to current layer in the properties. As I will be cloning from the current layer, I will clone the bottom border area. For the source area, I will use the upper wave. Let's also do the same for the top border area. Now the gap in between. I'm going to switch to the healing brush. I use the healing brush quite a lot actually and I like how it blends the source with the destination. As the clone tool just copies the pixels, it would not work and we would get a very strange artificial result. That looks pretty amazing. Awesome. Another trick for fine tuning is using the clone brush tool with a low flow. This will allow you to gently give some structure to the areas which need attention. In my last example in this video, I will show a bit more on this. Fine tuning can also be done by applying the clone brush in luminosity blend mode, which in some cases gets great results. In some cases, after cloning, you might get areas which will stand out because of the color mismatch, but this can be easily fixed by setting the clone tool to color blend mode and start cloning from areas with the correct color. I think it's time to check the before and the after. Pretty cool. I see a small difference here which can be neglected, but being me, I will quickly fix that by cloning from the original again and do some additional fine tuning. The in-paint brush tool is also very useful to clean up small areas. For example, in this image, the black sweater has a lot of white dust. By just painting over with them using the in-paint brush, we can easily get rid of them. An important tip is always to zoom out and review your work. When zoomed out, you can better see the inconsistencies or the repeating patterns. So always do the final review and fix any issues you might see. If you have the time, it is even better to leave your desk and come back later to have another look at your cloning. You might be surprised on what you have missed the first time. Excellent. Have a look at the before and the after. Much better. Here is another beach image where I will remove the subject. I'm going to really speed up the video until we come to the part I want to share with you. By the way, the process is exactly the same as I showed with the first image. I just did the in-painting and restored as much as possible from the original. And here is the part I promised to share. The part where I will be filling in the blanks and then fine tuning it. As mentioned earlier, using a low flow clone brush really helps here. We can sample from different areas and gently clone on top of the existing pixels, which can create unique textures. The most important thing to keep in mind is to avoid repetition at any cost. As with everything in life, the devil is always in the details. Fixing the small imperfections takes time and creativity. But practice makes perfect. From time to time, just pick up a random photo and try to remove a subject from it just for exercise. It is a fun activity and will definitely improve your retouching skills in the long term. If things went too fast for you in this video, no worries. In the next video of the series, I will focus on the clone tool and hopefully that video will clear up some questions you have. If you have any questions in the meantime, don't hesitate to ask them in the comments. Thank you for watching and until the next video.